This is the second section of chapter 13 on integration and this section is about indefinite integrals. So in the questions we've done so far, when we've wanted to integrate something, we've just said integrate this. Now we've got notation we can use and to show that we want to integrate an expression, we put the expression between this symbol here, which is like a, a stretched out S and this symbol here or these letters DX. So what do these mean? So this elongated stretched out S basically means integrate what comes next, what we have written down here. And the DX that we put at the end means integrate with respect to X. So X is going to be the letter that we're looking at when we add one to the power and divide by that new power. So we'll probably see something like this. We're integrating some sort of function here. So we've got that symbol there integration symbol and dx at the end and then you end up with some new function after integrating and then plus c. Now if we've got multiple terms in this expression here then we can integrate term by term in the same way that we differentiated term by term. Example 4, now part a, we want to uh, find this, we want to integrate that expression that's there. So we want to integrate. Now notice the whole thing is in brackets. That's just to make sure that we know that it's all of this that we need to integrate and the DX isn't part of what we need to integrate. It's um, just good practice to do that. If you've got a longer expression here, put it in brackets and sort of that symbol, the long S and the DX go around it. And we do this term by term. Now, remember what we do is um, we do the process and then we tidy up afterwards. So we add one to the power. So that's going to be three over two divided by the new power for the first term. Second term, we've got two X, add one to the power, divide by the new power plus C. Then we tidy that up. Now dividing by three over two, is the same as two thirds. So we've got two thirds x to the power of three over two. And the two divided by four simplifies to a half. So plus a half x to the power of four plus c. Moving on to part b, we're integrating x to the power of minus three over two plus two dx with respect to x. So we'll start with the first term. So we add one to the power. So that's going to be negative a half divided by that new power, negative a half. Then remember, constants become a constant with the x and then plus c. So we'll tidy that up. Dividing by a negative a half is the same as multiplying by two or negative two. So we'll have minus two x to the power negative a half plus 2x plus c. Let's move on to part c and this looks different. So we've got p x squared x to the power negative 2 plus q. Now what we do is we treat the p and q like numbers. Imagine these were numbers. So we don't integrate these. So you don't write p cubed over 3 or anything like that because we integrate with respect to x. x is the only thing where the power should be changing. Anything else you treat like a number. Right, so starting with this, what do I have? So imagine that's a number, p squared. Then I add one to the power, divide by the new power. So this power doesn't change. We're not differentiating with this or integrating with respect to p but x. And then the q, well, that's just like a constant, it's just like a number. So what does that become? That becomes a number plus x and plus c. Then we tidy up our answer. So um, dividing by negative one, we can just put the minus at the front. So minus p squared, x to the power negative one, plus qx plus c. And then part d, we're integrating 4t squared plus 6 dt. So slightly different in that we integrate with respect to t. So we treat t like the x. This is the thing that where the power should change, the t's now. So um, 
add one to the power, divide by the new power, and then the constant six becomes six t because we're integrating with respect to t. So treat it as if it were just an x plus c. Then we tidy up our answer. So four thirds t cubed plus six t plus c. Example five. So we've got three integrations here. So we'll start with part a. So we're integrating now. These we need to write in power form. So x to the power something, just like we did with differentiation. So the two over x cubed, we're gonna write as two x to the power negative three. And then the three square root x, we're gonna write as x to the power half. So just like differentiation, we need to make sure that we do that, write it as a power. Okay, so, 2x to the minus 3, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, plus c, then we tidy up our answer. So 2 divided by negative 2 is just minus 1, and that would be x to the power negative 2. 3 divided by 3 over 2, that's 2, and we've got a negative there, so it's negative 2x to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. Part b. Now, before we do this, we want to expand the brackets. Yeah, always simplify things. So we want to multiply both these things here by x. So that will give us x cubed. Then 2 over x times by x just becomes 2. And then dx here. So x cubed, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. The constant 2 becomes 2x plus c. And so I'm just going to write that as a quarter x to the power 4 plus 2x plus c. And then lastly, part c. So um, again, this needs putting in a form that I, I can integrate. So we'll expand those brackets or square it. So 2x all squared becomes 4x squared. Then we've got these terms here, both over x squared, so we'll divide them up. So we've got plus square root of x over x squared. Now actually, let me write that as x to the power half, to the power half, and then plus five over x squared. So it's not quite in the form that I want to integrate. So the 4x squared is fine. Then here, x squared divided, sorry, x to the power half divided by x squared. So we subtract powers. A half minus 2 is going to be minus 3 over 2. So x to the power minus 3 over 2. And 5 over x squared is the same as 5x to the power minus 2. So now it's in a form that we can integrate. Right, so 4x squared, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, plus x, add 1 to the power, so that's minus a half, divide by the new power. And then uh, 5x, add 1 to the new power, minus 1, divide by the new power, plus c. So then we tidy that up. 4 thirds x cubed. Dividing by minus a half is the same as times in by minus 2. So you've got minus 2x to the minus a half. And then the last term will just become minus 5x to the minus 1 plus c. So you should now be able to do exercise 13b on pages 291 to 293 of the textbook.